Hi, I'm Chuck Morundi, broker and founder of iRealty Virtual Brokers, and I want to show you something really helpful if you're thinking about buying property on a high bluff or even a medium bluff. I am on the Olympic Peninsula, but this will work with Google Earth Pro pretty much anywhere in the world. So if you don't already have Google Earth Pro downloaded onto your computer, do that first. And then you can literally type in an address and it'll zoom right into the area on that specific address. Now, I happen to be looking at a shoreline here on the Olympic Peninsula. But uh, if you're looking at property anywhere between, for example, Squim or Port Townsend on the Olympic Peninsula across the islands uh, uh, or even Whidbey Island, and on the many islands over to the shoreline of Seattle, you may want to use Google Earth Pro to look at the, uh, the bluff and to examine the stability of the bluff with some of these tools. They're really great. So first of all, I'm going to show you uh, as you can move Google Earth Pro, just drag it like this along the bluff to an area that you want to look at. And uh, up in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see that you have options to move all around, to, to turn, and to go forward and backward. You've got a 3D, you've got 2D. I want to show you how to use this if you're trying to measure the distance of a home uh, from the edge of the bluff, as well as to look at the stability of the bluff. Now, here is a home. Let's take a look at this one right here. You go up to the top and you pick the ruler right here and, you, and it says line, so I'm going to select line. Now, I'm going to choose to click right there at the edge of the house and come over here to the bluff, to the nearest area of the bluff. And I'm going to click there a second time. So that shows, you can see there's 69 feet from the edge of the house to the top of the bluff, approximately. Uh, my line looks pretty good on both ends, but um, who knows uh, exactly what it is without going out there and measuring it. Nevertheless, you can see how steep this bluff is. Now, here's another fantastic tool. I'm going to click on Path, and now I'm going to go from the shore all the way down here at the beach. I'm going to click on, eh, let's go down to the water level. I'm going to click uh, once down there at the water, and then I'm going to come all the way up. And I think I'll click way back here beyond the house. Now, there's something very interesting that happens here. Uh, and I want to zoom in up here. There, you can zoom in on this map to see a little better. Here's the house. And this line represents the, the line that I just put there. This great graph down below shows us the bluff. And uh, isn't this amazing what it shows us? Now, if you'll notice, as I drag the mouse from left to right down here on this chart at the bottom, look at the uh, top and you can see the red arrow following the line showing exactly where I am. And so if I go to the top of the bluff, right about here, you can see at the bottom the elevation is 108 feet. See right up here at the top? 108 feet. That's the elevation. So this is about a 100-foot bluff. I, I already knew that because it had been measured at one point, and it was 100 feet, according to the engineer. Now, at the bottom, there's another uh, measurement of feet, and that is the number of feet from the beginning of my line. My line is way over here, See out here by the water, and that's zero. And then as you move to the right, you can see at the bottom of the bluff approximately, eh, it looks like we're about 82 feet from the uh, water where I put that little dot. And we're at about 14 feet elevation right there. Now as we move to the right, you can see as we go up this steep bluff, uh, it increases in elevation and uh, the feet from the distance in the beginning there at the bottom. All the way at the top, here we are. Wow. This is an amazing depiction of how steep this bluff is. 
And uh, no surprise, because we could see in the photograph how steep it was. But this is a wonderful Google Earth Pro tool. And you can use this anywhere. Now let me uh, clear that and show you what happens if we close that. We can now move along in Google Earth Pro by dragging it this way, and we can look at the bluff along the way here. Now here's, let's look at this one. Now this is an interesting one, and I want to spin around a little bit here. I want to spin all the way around. You got to sort of play with this to, to learn how to <laughs> turn it and manipulate the uh, map. But this is a very interesting uh, situation right here where the bluff seems to be eroding dramatically and getting very close to these houses. I'm going to zoom in a little bit right here. And as you can see, this house is precariously close to the bluff. Let's measure that. Just out of curiosity, if we go to the line path uh, right here and I go to the yes, approximate top of the bluff to approximately the back of the house. Look at that. That's about 30 feet. That's far too close to that bluff. Now, how, how high do you suppose that bluff is? Well, let's come down here and Let's measure from the water and let's go all the way up to, you know, way over here so that we can see what we've got. Well, this is interesting. Uh, as you can see where the house is up at the top here, you can see where as I drag this at the bottom and also in the red arrow at the top, right at the top we're at about 135 feet above the water, 135 foot elevation level. And if we go down here, you can see that uh, the bottom of the bluff is about 14 feet elevation, and then it just kind of goes out to the water from there on the beach. But uh, that means this is about a 120-foot drop-off, and it's pretty doggone steep. Kind of scary looking, isn't it? And, and so you can do this up and down the... Um, on any bluff you want to, anywhere in the world, as far as I know. I think Google Earth is just about everywhere, excepting uh, Antarctica. And there aren't any bluffs with houses in Antarctica, as far as I know, so you're probably not going to be looking down there. But this is a great tool, and you can uh, literally go up and down the bluff, check the distance from the top of the bluff, check the height of the bluff, check the the elevation of the bluff. And now there's a couple of other things I want to show you that are also very, very useful. And in this case, you're going to go to the browser. And I'm going to pull the browser up like this right in front of me. And you're going to look for Washington State Coastal Atlas Map. You can see I'm at the top, looking at the top left-hand corner of this. Yeah, I'm not going to try and give you the URL. That's too complicated and long. Just do a Google search for Washington State Coastal Atlas Map, and you'll find a link to this site right here. Now, again, you can, you can negotiate this map to any place you want to. In this map, I happen to be at Beckett Point outside of Port Townsend. Now here's the great thing with this map, is you can look at, if you want to look at the bluff, let's go over where there's a bluff. Now you can't really tell right here, but this is a bluff, and there are houses up here in these trees. The bluff starts down here at the beach, starts to climb as you go here. You can go over here and pick um, contents. See up in the left-hand side where it says contents? And you can say, well, I want to look at uh, slope stability. And you, you check slope stability, and you hit go. Over in the bottom left-hand side, see my uh, mouse over here? There's a, a slider to change the transparency. And as, as you increase the transparency, or reduce it, I should say, <laughs> you get a map with 
uh, legends over here that show you the stability uh, measured by the Department of Ecology. So this particular area right here, this light brown area, shows that it's unstable because there are some old landslides there. The red area you can see over here says unstable and there are some recent landslides there. And the yellow area is intermediate and so on. Now, uh, what can you do with this? Well, if you're looking at a house, you can look at what the, the Department of Ecology, how they designate the uh, bluff. Is it stable, unstable? Have there been, um, is, has there been erosion in the past? And uh, I'm sliding the uh, transparency over to, to clear that. Now, there's a, a, a great uh, tool here. And if you go back to the contents, you can also look at photographs. Now, if you click on this image uh, or this uh, link to the 2016-2017 photographs here, you can go to the Shoreline Photos page. I'm going to click on that. This opens up uh, to a map like this, and you'll want to zoom in to the area that you want to uh, examine. I'm going to zoom in to the Beckett Point area that I was just showing you, which is outside of Port Townsend, right here. And you've got to zoom in. Let's zoom all the way in to Beckett Point. Here we are. And these little red dots represent photographs that were taken at some point in the past and that are now in the database for the Department of Ecology. If I come over to the left, you can see photograph series by year. So let's, let's look at 2016, 2017. And if you look at the center photograph here, there's a red dot. If you click on that dot right there, it opens up the photographs of that part of the shoreline taken in 2016, 2017. There's three photographs here. This is the center one. And if, if you click on this one, I'm going to start with this one here because this kind of gives us a context. You open that up and you can see Beckett Point. Here's the road along the beach. Here's some houses along the beach. And here are, here's the, uh, the bluff as it starts to climb in this direction. And we can see that there's been some erosion over here. Now, let's close that and go back to this photograph that we first had in the center. This shows us uh, the bluff a little bit to the left, or in this direction, where we see that there has been some erosion over past years. And this photograph, by the way, again, reminder, was taken in 2016. Now we can look at 2006 to 2007 too. Uh, you just enlarge the image, and here we are with that same image. And this is the beginning of the bluff, so we don't see any erosion here. But as we move to the left, watch what happens. Uh, I click on that image, and I open it up, and now we can see that in 2006 there was some erosion over here. These photographs are very, very valuable, very interesting. Now let's go back to 2002, 2007. I'm clicking over here on the left-hand side, and again, you can see that it opens up these images like this. And let's move, we see some erosion there, but let's move further to the left by clicking on this image and opening it up. And voila, we've got some fairly substantial erosion here. Isn't that interesting? And you can go all the way back to 1992 and back to 1976. If I open up this photograph, again, we can see that there was some significant erosion back then. And I'm going to do one more, 1976. Um, that photograph was taken way out up higher over the water, but you can see that in 76 there was erosion in these areas. If you're looking at a house, see way down here by the beach, uh, we have not seen any erosion down here all the way back to 1976. So these maps are very, very helpful. 
and a lot of fun if you're doing research on a property and you're trying to figure this stuff out. But start with Google Earth Pro, and uh, then you can go to the uh, Department of Ecology site and look at photographs for a specific area. Hey, I hope this has been helpful. I'm Chuck Marundi. You can find me on my main blog, which has over 2,200 articles written specifically for buyers, and uh, that is squimblog.com. And as a buyer's agent, I can represent you anywhere on the Olympic Peninsula, Whidbey Island, Port Townsend, all the way across the islands to Seattle's shoreline. And I hope I'll have the privilege of working with you.